Hi, and welcome to Anime with Annie. In this video today, I'll be reviewing Hunter x Hunter anime overall. But before we get into it, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any videos from us. Let's get started. Review According to reports, Hunter x Hunter differs from other shonen fighting anime. Let's start by dispelling this idea because it only leads to unwarranted optimism and eventual disillusionment. Hunter x Hunter is about a youngster with big goals, just like other fighting anime. This time we follow Gon Frieses, a youngster who is looking for his father after he and his mother were abandoned. In the hope that the occupation may lead to fresh lines of inquiry, he must follow in his father's footsteps and become a hunter in order to achieve that goal. Naturally, the narrative begins with Gon sitting for the hunter certification exam. Here's where we run into our first obstacle. The hunter exam is as boring as a tunnel through a mountain. One hoax after another is all that the exam contains. Gon must take a ship to get to the mainland because she lives on an island. He had no idea that the crossings were a requirement for the test. He seeks directions to the exam when he arrives at land, but the fake directions are actually a component of the test. The exam site's secret password is then revealed, followed by an elderly woman with riddles. But hold on, that's not the website. To get there, we first have to complete a marathon. Observing people run is fascinating. Are we done yet then? No. We must prepare some barbecue. There are 21 episodes of grueling work after tedious task, and it just keeps going and going. Every notion the author had for this exam is dragged on for eons. Why not choose the top three concepts and develop something interesting from them? Character introductions are its only function, which could have happened organically if the exam hadn't been there. And most introductions are irrelevant, as we'll discuss later. A 21 episode exam might be possible. Yes, if it's intriguing. Using covert ninja tactics known as character development, meaningful conflict, and narrative progression, Naruto passed the Chunin exam. If HXH's first episode had come after such an arc, all we would have required is for the narrator to introduce Gaunt to us. The hunter he is, 21 episodes were kept. With the exception of shonen anime, which had little potential to begin with, this is the worst opening I've ever seen. Although the arc is not filler, it might as well be. The story then enters a tournament arc, which is another recurring theme in the genre. Gon and Kalua must compete to win the top reward of a battle tower with hundreds of stories. Things become serious after the 200th floor. Fortunately, we don't have to see all 200 levels because those who perform well move up more quickly. The training sessions that gobble up too much time in between fights are the tournament arc's demise. Hunter x Hunter has a serious issue with oversimplifying its ideas and making them needlessly complex. Auras are used in this anime. If you've ever seen anything with aura powers, you'll understand the point in a flash. It cannot be learned in less than 4 hours of lectures, according to HXH. You can bet your life savings that it'll take a break from every battle to give a detailed analysis of X character's abilities and tactics. Because there's no plot or internal character development in training episodes, they are terrible. Although it's not unique to this anime, it is very dull. Only Bleach comes to mind as doing them more harm. In episode 31, Gon faces Ahsoka, an intriguing pirate-like villain who cherishes the challenge above everything else and would go to tremendous measures for the biggest challenge including protecting heroes who might battle him in the future. This is the first truly memorable moment in the series. He is quite curious about Gon. He and his villainy were first introduced to us in the exam, but everything is repeated here. When contrasted to Bubblegum, his power is a pliable aura that, among other magic crits, can manipulate victims with puppet strings. He is a fighter who enjoys performing on stage. Hisoka is a member of the Phantom Troop, a group of evildoers that introduce the series' next and finest arc. To make a lot of money so they can get a video game that will guide them to their father, Gun and his friends move to the large city. Because every narrative point is important to the plot and provides each main character something to do, the Phantom Troop arc triumphs where the others fall short. More on that later. It also helps to have a variety of compelling antagonists who actually pose a threat. The fight between Kurapika and the bad guy, who I initially mistook for a girl in the artwork, is a highlight. Although there must be one in every shonen, he is the series' revenge guy. Despite having a lot in common with other members of this archetype, he succeeds in the series because of unique talent that definitely explains how he may hope to stand up to such formidable foes without overwhelming him. Shonens typically use absurd plot twists to reverse the power, like in the case of Bleach's ridiculous power resets. After 50 episodes, I'm not completely blown away by this arc, but it has been trending upward, and I'm confident that only good things are ahead. I was so mistaken. The subsequent Greed Island narrative is so much worse than the test. 
on the trail of his father, Gon seeks out the video game Greed Island. Players enter the game environment and engage in combat, utilizing skill-based cards. Yes, we are now playing Yu-Gi-Oh! As stupid as that seems, it is. This storyline served as the author's justification for including more complicated mechanisms and hours of fools describing how they function. Watch the dodgeball match in this arc if you want to experience some of the worst pace and exposition anime has had to offer. Such garbage is only manageable by Zen masters. This era's main antagonist, a punk who uses cards to blow up people, is painfully uninteresting. This arc is really just a way for you to waste 17 episodes of your time, much like the exam was. If I didn't know any better, I could have thought this was a filler arc. Finally, the Chimera Ant Arc, which has the most episodes, 61, depicts the story of a hazardous breed of human-creature hybrids that soon acquire aura powers. Numerous hunters are sent by the Hunter Association to deal with the menace. The narrative has now transitioned from a large city to a computer game, and finally to a fantasy about battling monsters. Hunter x Hunter lacks concentration. I feel as though I'm reviewing three separate anime at once, which is why this review is so lengthy. This series gives the feeling that the author had several ideas and jumped hastily from one to the next because he wanted them all to be in one novel. The big bad phantom troop may come to mind. After their arc, they hardly had any more meaning. Each arc throws a ton of new characters at you to care about before removing them as soon as the narrative is over. Whatever became of that guy, I continued pondering. Hunter x Hunter introduces a core cast of four people at the beginning. Recall Kurapika, who was crucial in the battle against the troop. He almost makes it. Oh, and there's a character by the name of Leoro, who you'll recognize as the tall man that appears on the majority of the cover art, and gets enough focus to qualify as a key character. He appears on screen for about as long as a supporting character. Only the white-haired Kalua receives enough screen time to be equally relevant to Gon. So it should come as no surprise that the Chimera Ant storyline introduces nearly 50, count them, 50 brand new characters to the narrative. If I may comment, even with 61 episodes, this story doesn't immediately relate to the primary plot. However, it has an interesting arc. It begins slowly, which could have been done in half the episodes. But after the major antagonist appears in Act 2, it starts to show promise. Finally, it ends with a powerful third act. The villainous Chimera King who questions life, conscious, and purpose is at the center of the narrative. Is Hunter x Hunter superior to the majority of the genre? Yes, of course. It isn't difficult to reach single-digit ranks with such a low bar, even though that is relatively low when considering anime as a whole. It would seem mind-blowing to have any fighting strategy, character growth, and a plot that goes beyond hit the bad guy if it came from Dragon Ball Z, as it does with the 90s manga version. Hunter x Hunter has 148 episodes, which makes it tough for me to suggest it. Think about the number of more enjoyable animes you could complete in that time. Additionally, you must take into account that no one knows whether or even when this will ever come to a conclusion. I have no doubt that if you enjoy Shonen, you will enjoy this. But I can't suggest it if you don't adore Shonen. Hunter x Hunter's strongest point are its acting and its soundtrack, which is respectable yet montanous for a long-running series. Only for fans of fighting shonen, Hunter x Hunter lacks the mainstream appeal to engage audiences outside its target audience. For those that do begin, be aware that there is currently no plan for a new season. And that concludes my review of Hunter x Hunter. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel, Anime with Annie, for more such exciting anime content and reviews. And please leave comments about what you thought of today's video. And remember, have an Annie-mazing day!